Hey everyone, this is Mike from Mike's Do It Yourself. Today I want to show you how to change your axle grease and just look at your axle for your uh, trailer or RV. Well, first thing you want to do is support your axle with uh, a jack and what I've used is a stabilizer jack. In the back also, it's out of the camera view but you want to make sure you support your frame before you put anything underneath your suspension parts. It's very important. So once that's done, you can lift up your axle. Uh, first, loosen up your lug nuts. And then uh, once it's supported with a jack, you can take your lug nuts off and take the tire off. And there's the trailer axle. Now it does have a rubber boot at the end there. And you would just take that off if you wanted to change out or put in more uh, axle grease. So what I'm doing here, I'm just putting a thin blade in between the metal to separate that cup uh, from the rest of the axle. So if you just wiggle it back and forth, you should get enough separation where you can put just a thin bladed flathead screwdriver in there and pop that cup off. Now you can see that grease is pretty dark. So this grease has probably been in there about a year, year and a half, two years tops. And what I'm doing now, I'm just taking the cotter pin out, and it's actually to the side of the castle nut. It's not in the center of the spindle. So once you pull that cotter pin out, I'm just using some pliers and a hammer and just knock it out. I am going to replace it. I'm not going to reuse it. And you can take the castle nut off. And it should loosen up pretty, pretty easily. And then there is a washer that has a little edge to the top of it, and so you'll want to make that, make sure that that's put in correctly um, when you put it all back together. So be careful with your axle bearings or your wheel bearings. You don't want to damage those in any way. Now if those are scored or you see like excessive heat marks on them, uh, like purplish color, you'll want to go ahead and replace them. But these looked really good. Everything looked fine in there. And I did end up spraying that out with uh, some brake clean. And then uh, at the end, you know, it gets repacked. Or you can repack it before you put it in there, either way. And once you get the hub off, or the drum, uh, just inspect it. Make sure there's no scoring. Uh, make sure your seals look really good. And then you can do some brake clean. Just clean off your pads, so inspect your pads, your brake pads on both sides. Inspect your magnet down at the bottom, your actuating arm, uh, all your springs. Just make sure there's nothing broken, make sure everything moves and uh, looks good. Now this one had a little bit of debris in the backside because there is an actual hole in the backside where stuff can get into, so uh, there was a lot to clean out in this one. So just wiping off the magnet. Make 
making sure everything moves. Nothing's locked up, nothing's binding. And then there is a spring on the back of that magnet too. So just make sure that's not broken. Make sure all the wires look good too that go into it. And just clean off all that old grease. And I just sprayed it down some more with some brake clean. And get everything out of there. Now what I've heard is that magnet, like if the holes in the, the front of it are gone, then it should be replaced. So uh, let me know if that's what, uh, you know, anybody else out there has heard. But as far as this one's concerned, there's still some holes in the front of it. You know, it's not excessively worn. And uh, after I get the, the hub back on or everything back together, um, I do check it also just to make sure it is working. So. And just some more brake clean on the drum. Now this is a good time too, uh, if you need to adjust it at all, there is a adjuster back behind the magnet. And then, so if your pads need to go out or in, say if um, you, know, you need to adjust them out a little bit, you could do that you know, before you put the drum back on. But it is self-adjusting, so it should be pretty close to you know, exactly where it should be. You just want maybe a little bit of drag, not much. So you can see I'm cleaning around that seal. I didn't spray directly in there because you have another wheel bearing on that other side, on the back side of it. So I threw some clean grease in there. And when you put grease on the back of the, or the front of that Zerk fitting, when you put grease into there, it'll actually go to the back of the spindle and move forward. So that's what's good about it. It, it pushes anything, any old grease back out towards you. So just remember that. And then I'm not, I didn't repack those bearings because like I said, that new grease will come forward and and get into there and then just make sure your washer is keyed the right way when you push it back in and you clean up that castle nut Now as far as tightening the castle nut, you see I'm using channel locks and I'm moving left or right with it just to see if it uh, there's excessive movement. And so I'll tighten it, not super tight, just, just tight and go ahead and rotate it and see how it feels. And then I'll loosen it. And then again, just see if there's excessive play. If there's excessive play, I would just tighten it up a little bit more. And then loosen it again. And then if it doesn't move back and forth, left or right, but it still turns freely, then it should be about perfect. And then you'll just want to make sure your cotter pin lines up.
just making sure it's not going to move left or right. Because you don't want extra wear on those wheel bearings. And just take the end of the cotter pin and just bend those straight up. And then you don't want them catching on anything, just so just make sure they're against the end there. And then what I ended up using, I used uh, some marine grease, uh, wheel bearing grease. And this stuff is, you know, high pressure, um, high temperature marine grease. And so when you're pushing it in there, just keep in mind you want to get that old grease out. I don't think I really showed it on this, but it does push forward. So just keep going until the old grease comes out. And then when you start seeing new grease, you can wipe it and then put your cap back on. And so you can see I'm just cleaning the outside of it. Some more brake clean. Just make sure that's rubber malleted or hammered all the way in. And you can take a small screwdriver, just pop the edge of that rubber boot. That will relieve the air that's in there. And once you get it all cleaned up and wiped down, it's ready to test. So you have a helper, uh, if it's all plugged in, you just spin it, make sure it stops, and it stops, and then they push on the brake pedal. And then it's ready to go. And you can just put your tire back on. And the torques vary. Uh, for this trailer, it was uh, this is a Jayco J Flight uh, 17 or 19 footer. And this one is uh, 120 foot pounds for the torque for these lug nuts. you get those all the way on and go ahead and jack it up jack it up a little bit and then make sure you move your other jacks or take your other jacks down that are for your frame so then you can remove that jack and then lower it back down And then go ahead and torque them uh, just in a star pattern. And I hope this has been helpful. This has been Mike from Mike's Do It Yourself. Good luck on your next home around on a project. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment.
just a final check of the torque and then just of course make sure this doesn't roll or have it hooked up to your vehicle which this is so it's all good